சைலண்டா போயிட்டு மட்டும் விட்டுறாத சார் ஹலோ மனோஜ் சார் குட் ஆஃப்டர்நூன் சார் ஹோப் மை வாய்ஸ் இஸ் ஆடியபிள் யா யா ரைட் சார் ஆடியபிள் ஆடியபிள் ஃபேண்டாஸ்டிக் சோ வி ஹேவ் சம் மோர் மெம்பர்ஸ் ஜாயினிங் sure so i'll scan i'll share my screen so we can quickly test if the presentation is working hope you can see my screen yes sir yes sir fantastic sir so, apparently youtube link is going on sir awesome so bear with me there would be some interruptions by my son but uh, i've taken care of it so we don't have any distractions but we have to live with these things right <laughs> good so you can uh, i think it works no sir the slide if i if i change the slides it works i guess no no just we wait wait for wait yeah. for while uh or uh, 5 minutes after that we will start okay no problem sir we have, we have yeah, yeah. yeah. I, i have to thank for uh, starting the presentation by 12 o'clock instead of 1 o'clock yeah <laughs> no, i felt the same it's better to push uh-huh. it uh, yeah because mm-hmm. i i finished up my meeting an hour, an hour ago so i had some time very good time it's sooner the better okay okay Yeah, yeah. I will... yeah good morning to one and all uh, dr selva uh, pro sir uh, now we can start okay pro sir uh, good afternoon to all uh, welcome our chief guest faculty members and participants today webinar topic is sensor internet of everything and nano technology i i am glad to introduce the chief guest of session mr peter manoj who is working as a project staff indian institute of science bangalore he is our distinguished alumni At present, he is working at Center for Nano Science and Engineering, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. He has been working in the field of sensor and nano science engineering for more than ten years. He leads and associates with industry affiliate program and other projects. He is very much interested, namely gas sensors, IoT, 
IoT pervasive computing and wireless sensor network now i handed over the session to mr manoj uh, i request mr paul rajan sir uh, to play college uh, season good Mr. Peter Manoj, yes. start, please start your session. I'm Peter Manoj, sir. Continue the session. Awesome. So, thank you for the kind introduction. Uh, I am delighted to uh, make this presentation over a webinar. Uh, so, first of all, I would like to do a quick sound check. So, uh, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, sir. Okay. And uh, my screen, uh, can you see my screen? Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So hope everybody is on the same page. Uh, <clears throat> so if there is any uh, disconnection or uh, if you have any lag uh, in my presentation, feel free to stop. Uh, and I request the moderator to uh, ensure we don't have any jitters. Okay. Uh, so Mr. Selvan, sir, shall I start? Yeah, I start, sir. You proceed, sir. Good. So. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, hope you're safe and healthy. So today, uh, it's been uh, a very uh, exciting uh, experience uh, to share about a couple of information. And uh, I had been uh, uh, very happy in, in engaging a uh, lot of discussions with uh, PSNA College. And uh, so today, uh, my presentation would touch upon uh, uh, IIC and uh, I would explain about nanoscience department and the topic of our interest uh, is sensors, IOE and nanotechnology. So first of all, uh, I will give a four note. So, so first Peter I will... Manoj, Yes, yes, uh, Please share your screen. Oh, one second. I'm sorry. Oh. I think, I think, uh, can you see my yes, screen? Yes, we are getting. Awesome. Thanks for the heads up, sir. Okay. All right. So, uh, so first slide, uh, you see Indian Institute of Science. Uh, it's a very uh, privilege to work here uh, in a very reputed institute. So, so I to tell about IIC, uh, it's one of the foremost uh, 
academic institutes uh, is offering research and promotion of world innovation and world class education to train future leaders in science and technology so i'm sure uh, we all know about iit madras and other iits so for science uh, iic is one of the leading uh, premier institutes in india so i would like to say about uh, the facilities or the departments uh, we have so iic has several departments and uh, uh, so one of the uh, key department is uh, is the division of interdisciplinary science and as you see uh, there are several departments uh, in iic close to 40 so every year when we have this uh, iic open day most of these departments are uh, accessible by public and if any student or faculty wants to interact with respective faculty in each department they can contact over email or they can reach out to me so uh, i work at sense center for nanoscience and engineering we do a lot of uh, nanoscience uh, research here and specifically we we deal with uh, uh, fabrication of devices and we have a state of the art uh, clean room facility and uh, we have a characterization facility so i joined here in uh, 2013 so which i'll be explaining in my next slide so uh, since i said it is nano science uh, so we deal with a scale of 10 to the power of minus 9 you know i'm showing you a picture here uh, that explains the scale uh, and and if you see on on uh, to your right it is pm 10 so it is which is particulate matter it's a dust particle which is 10 micrometer and if you see uh, the red blood cell is 7 micro 7 micrometers and uh, and the topic uh, which also deals is, is like coronavirus sort of thing it's 100 nanometers so you can imagine the amount of uh, interdisciplinary research we carry here is on the nano scale, nano size level right so 100 nanometers is the kind of viruses and it's equivalent to the gate of the leading edge transistors right so that explains on what scales we work so as i had mentioned we have a 14000 square feet clean room of nano fabrication and we have a 7000 square feet uh, uh, semiconductor clean room uh, for nano characterization so in addition to these, uh, these are centralized facilities and it was dedicated by Prime Minister Narendra Modi uh, in the year 2016 to all our nation. And, uh, and if you see, uh, we have other additional facilities like MEMS and IC packaging system engineering facility also. Uh, so, so we have about uh, 17 faculty members here who work on different research areas. And each of them uh, have their own uh, labs, like uh, biosensors lab, photonics lab, and uh, functional thin films lab. So to, to specify what research areas uh, each faculty member work here was on power electronics, emerging electronics, like flexible electronics, photonics, system scaling, uh, nano bio healthcare, photovoltics, nano agree and uh, different types of sensors uh, which uh, deal with the environment so uh, every every time when i visit uh, psna or any uh, reputed institutes so they ask me how, what are the entry modes to iic right so it's a very important question and uh, it makes me to put this slide uh, which is uh, uh, which is in the page of iic admission uh, so basically here you see the eligibility criteria, what qualifying exams and what programs are available and what disciplines the students can choose. So this is available in IIC admissions page and I request the students and in, in fact the faculty members also because if they want to register for PhD, so they can definitely uh, contact the IIC admissions uh, for the same. And uh, so moving on, uh, so I work for the industry affiliate program, but I don't do any cutting edge research, but I observe the or uh, I observe the correspondence between the industry 
academia so which makes me to uh, explain the end to end aspects like what industry is expecting and what uh, the uh, academia can do right so so we work with about eight companies and these eight companies are uh, closely associated with sense and uh, so if to name a few asm technologies they do a lot of engineering solutions bharat electronics who are uh, like 80s fab but they do a lot of work on radars and they use our facility very extensively the clean room facility and centum electronics uh, they do a lot of work into packaging and uh, dc dc converters so cmti is central manufacturing technology institute uh, and so we do a lot of uh, characterize fa fabrication and work for them so uh, some work related to nano imprinting is also on progress so lamb research is a semiconductor second largest semiconductor company uh, which focuses on equipment development so they do uh, master in uh, the process called edge and all uh, so we have been uh, in touch with them and india is a growing uh, uh, team uh, where we deal with a uh, lot of mechanical and uh, we deal a lot of electrical related projects with them so lnt as you all know uh, is a spin off from the parent company lnt so we do a lot of technology services uh, uh, they do, i'm sorry they do a lot of technology services where uh healthcare iot is uh, one of the uh, key drivers uh, and they in, they interact with us for sensor related interactions so racon is a very different company and it's more relevant to it because they do a lot of uh, telecom related solutions so as you know as you all know oscillators crystals so they manufacture or they have a clean room which makes all these uh, crystal oscillators ocxos that goes into Uh, base stations and different uh, telecom or radars and all so we they use our facility for a different uh, uh, type of uh, device uh, manufacturing so western digital as you all know it's a data company and uh, memory i'm sure we all would have learned uh, computer architecture where we would have studied about memory memory architecture so they deal a lot of uh, uh, memory uh, solutions dram and 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 packaging how do you uh, fit in a large memory uh, <clears throat> size in a smaller package and uh, so we interact with them and we have enabled a lot of placements in western digital uh, so this is to name a few uh, uh, companies whom we have interacted with. there are a bunch of other companies like intel samsung we we do interact with them too so these are some features uh, where we offer to our industry affiliates uh, uh, so that benefits basically our industry we do enable projects we help students to get placed internships and we have a yearly seminar and uh, we have lectures so this is so why i'm presenting this particular information is to explain how an industry academia collaborates which helps the the college our college students to know how industry interactions would happen and uh, it it makes us or or more capable you know to handhold with industries so this is just to show some glimpses uh, of whom we work so right top uh, left uh, if you see it's professor rao tumula who is generally known as god of packaging right we all know mems accelerometer sensors so most of uh, the uh, uh, research work which was conducted in georgia tech had gone into technology so he is referred to as god of packaging and to your, to your top right uh, so i have been very instrumental in organizing the alumni meet for our students so if you see uh, about we have about 6 to 7 students most of them who have we have enabled placements in big companies like samsung global foundries western digital and all so on in the middle of the screen uh, as i had mentioned we have the symposium the research symposium where we have uh, most of the members here are academia very few faculty members so uh, i work with them closely to coordinate these interactions and to your bottom uh, you see uh, uh, professor once again this probably is about you see professor mohan i work with him very closely he 
so this is one of the training we offered for industry it's a high level training right so okay so to tell about me i, I think everybody knows me but I, i have to put this slide uh, so i have been working uh, for close to 7 years in uh, sense but let me let me give you a little bit of background how my journey and line of work it is so i had phenomenally worked on wireless sensor networks during my btech days in college and uh, when i had moved to uh, for my masters i had specifically worked on uh, <clears throat> pick microcontroller series with uh, using some gas sensors and i had worked in industry for about 2 years Uh, specifically on iot and uh, technical briefing so and i had been in uh, sense uh, for 7 years as i had mentioned so i work closely with industry on managing and coordination so here i have a, i had learned about sensors ioe semiconductor and nanotechnology so this makes me to understand how a technology works and how do you engineer a solution and what is the science behind it right so i think as a as an individual or a student one should be very keen in learning right so i had the right questions in my bachelor's what is a sensor and how does a sensor work and uh, there was a lot of freedom from college to learn on different aspects and i had an opportunity to spend quality time in libraries interact with mechanical department civil those days so i think that is the take away what why, why i had put these slides uh, for our students right so moving on uh, so today the topic is sensors internet or everything nanotechnology right so here uh, sorry i couldn't introduce face to face but this is my photo and this is how i, how I look right next slide so everybody uh, uh, is you can hear me right sir the moderator can you just acknowledge so i can on with the actual session sir yes sir yes sir awesome thank you thank you for the acknowledgement all right uh see industry 4.0 uh, started from 18th century and here we are in uh, uh, industry 4.0 which enables intelligent production incorporated with iot cloud technology and big data right and uh, so industry 4.0 is a buzzword and if i'm sure if you search with a keyword lot of a lot of information you can gain uh, so why i have put this slide is to illustrate how industrial revolution is taking place over time and there is a dearth of need of sensors computing and lot of data would be exchanged right so what is internet of things right so internet of things is physical objects that are linked through wired and wireless networks so what is internet of everything so it's like bringing people together process data and things that are network connections with more relevance with more valuable than ever before right so it's bringing people process data and things right so iot is also a subset of ioe you know and industry 4.0 is beyond a uh, connectivity you know it's like more of industrial revolution which includes 3d printing augmented reality so this is internet of everything uh, right so let me tell about sensors right so people have been knowing about sensors for over hundreds of years and many sensors have been used over 60 years you know but there have been continuous improvement in manufacturing methods which have made sensors smaller and easier to use and there's there's been a lot of advancement in electronics right so if you if i remember during our btech days we used to have a 8 bit micro microcontroller but nowadays you have really highly sophisticated computers uh, chipsets which enable a lot of good computing uh, like edge computing you can do you know and in the future we would definitely have smart digital network and nano sensors like petit small sensors you know which are trending uh, in the future right okay so sensors and actuators right so we are giving our world a digital nervous system see there are about 12 plus 
sensors which are very key sensors that are already there and uh, some uh, we all know is like temperature sensor proximity accelerometers uh, magnetic sensors leak sensors force flow gas sensors acoustic humidity moisture and displacement sensors right so these are some key sensors uh, which are available at uh, and there are a lot more sensors, uh, you know, which we'll be discussing in the next slides. So one of the specific uh, example is the gas sensor, you know. So gas sensor, basically, it has a sensing element and it has a material called SNO2. So in, in your IT days, you would be learning about technology, right? So, but the technology involves a lot of science and from that science, the technology actually evolves. So like this, SNO2 is one of the material, you know, they have used to uh, used in uh, sensors. When there is a target gas, uh, uh, there, there is a difference in resistance, which will lead to measurement of these gases in PPM, right? So that's how the uh, gas sensors actually work. Right. So if you see uh, placing of these sensors is one of the important tasks and uh, this helps uh, in uh, detection of traffic jams and there is a data sent to the traffic management platform and here you have sensors and actuators and alter the traffic signal depending on the uh, amount of CO, NOx and NO2. Right. So this sensor is a key component and actuators depending on the uh, sensor data what decision to be made right like let's say if there is too much of traffic so this actuator would change the color of uh, the traffic or there would be any other disciplinary actions so this diagram kind of illustrates how a small sensor component is very important in detecting different uh, or making uh, air quality platform management uh, very effectively. So this is a very simple image uh, because I'm sure students would be seeing this uh, webinar. So it's a smart irrigation system which is capable of automating an irrigation process by analyzing the soil moisture, climate condition, parameters like pH, humidity, right? So if you see there are a lot of sensors, right? Like water level sensor, rain sensors, and here you have an Arduino which uh, reads different parameters and it connects with different modules here. So this is how uh, a typical IoT uh, in a in a grads graduation graduate level uh, it would be, right? So this is just to give an idea. So I'm sure you guys uh, know about this uh, image. Uh, so. Uh, if it was an interactive session, I would have posed a question, but this is a engine, you know? So, so you, if you see a normal engine will have multiple sensors, right? It has an air mass flow meter and you have a temperature sensor, but uh, uh, if you have a car I, uh, or if you're, if you're close by to a mechanic uh, shop, so drop by and check these uh, sensors, you know? It's a good learning exercise during this uh, COVID session. So you can find our air mass flow meter, lambda sensor is, is pre predominantly monitoring oxygen level in the exhaust pipe and it tunes the engine RPM sensor to burn the fuel very effectively, right? So if you understand how a sensor is a very key component in a, uh, uh, in different uh, verticals, you know, like or be it automotive, agriculture, and uh, traffic management, and, and many more, right? So this is a very recent uh, 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 information just two days ago, you know, some of the Harvard and MIT researchers are developing a face mask, you know, that lights up when it detects uh, coronavirus. Right. So this was very interesting to me and I was reading uh, about uh, this article. So I'm sure we all would have studied in our uh, school days, you know, calorimetric detection and a uh, lot of chemistry we would have studied, you know, uh, RNA, DNA. I'm sure those legacy subjects which we learned 
shouldn't be forgotten because uh, even if you pursue your uh, B.Tech in IT, so those legacy subjects are very important. So see here, they have made a very interesting sensor called toe hold switch sensors, you know, that are synthetic riboregulators that control the translation of a gene via RNA-RNA interactions. They utilize a designed hairpin structure to block gene translation in cis by sequestration of the ribosome binding site and start codon. So I'll just show this video, so which, which will kind of uh, easily explain how it actually does, right? So this is the toe hold switch sensor, right? And the, the, it's called hairpin and you have the binding site and the sequence, starting sequence. So you have the target RNA, right? See like virus like Corona and uh, uh, different viruses, you know, Zika or, uh, uh, so they have these RNA, target RNA, which binds with this uh, switch sensor. And if you see, uh, the, so it holds or it binds with this sensor, you know? So what researchers are doing is they have designed such sensors and they have integrated with the mask. So when they when there is a contact uh, with uh, the with the coronavirus or uh, any virus like Zika virus, there is a color change uh, happening, right? So this color change enables them to say that there is virus or not, right? So this is some advanced level of sensors which people are working. I'm sure students should read and learn and understand such key concepts from uh, these articles. So I've mentioned the DOI link here below, which can be uh, shared later. Okay. So we just saw about sensors. Now we are uh, dis we'll discuss about sensor electronics. So every sensor will have a signal and you should have the uh, apt electronics to measure the signal, you know? So here you see a parameter and you have a measuring principle. The important part is signal conditioning. And uh, this after uh, you receive a signal, so let's say for gas sensors, you receive a very small signal, you know, and you definitely need an ADC to uh, modulate this particular signals and have an electronics to measure it, right? So this is a very important step. And I'm sure we all would have learned ADC, right? In our uh, BTEC uh, classes, A to D conversion, and you have a lot of filtering, spectral analysis, and uh, we do a lot of sensor fusion, right? So these are some key functional blocks of sensor electronics, right? So whatever we learn is actually being used in sensors to interface, uh, uh, right, for sensor electronics, right? So I'm sure most of you know, but I will just briefly say how a sensor module looks. It has different sensors battery backup, but nowadays we are people are using energy harvesters or uh, battery less modules, you know, so they, uh, they harvest energy from different sources. And most importantly, there is a communication board which sends data uh, to the gateway and there is a default temperature humidity sensor in the board already. Right? So this is the top view and this is the side view of the sensor pod block diagram. So I was checking in the internet you know, so what are the uh, new developed boards, you know? So this is something I have, I've just uh, witnessed. Uh, excuse me. So, so it's called uh, RSL 10 sensor development kit by On Semiconductor. So they have a multi-sensor BLE feature. So it's a SIP package, you know, system in package. And the board has about 10 different sensors, including ambient light, inertial and environmental sensors. So this is a very highly sophisticated unit. So you can understand how a normal uh, 
excuse me how a normal board looks and a and an advanced board looks right but for academia academia application i'm sure there'll be a lot of adreno based uh, kits available and one search away you, students can easily get access to that and they can try their own uh, iot solutions right so let me so we have covered about set, about sensors so now i will go in detail about internet of things right so the general definition of internet of things is uh, iot allows people and things to be connected any time any place with anything and anyone ideally using a path network and a and any service right so in specific in a technical perspective it's a network of physical objects that contain embedded technology to communicate and sense with our internal states or the external environment right so so that is iot uh, as per the definition by gartner so there are three main components you know in iot sense uh, like sensors the network and the systems that process the data you know so every day there are multiple of industrial uh, assets objects with sensor that can communicate with each other using this infrastructure so the key uh, uh process would be sense process communicate cloud and analyze you know so these are some three key elements so so if you see the basic iot solution components uh since we are all it engineers so i would emphasize more on how data is being sent right so here you see sensors and there is some actuators there are field gateways and this gateways get the data from sensor and stream it to the cloud gateway and there is a new term called data lake and big data warehouse you know so from the image you can easily make out it's it's direct data which is uh, in one place and you have uh, aggregated this data in a big data warehouse so in detail if you see from the gateway you connect to a cloud gateway and uh, this streams the data and it is pooled in the data lake and it is aggregated in a data warehouse where you have different machine learning and you derive certain models and this helps in controlling the data right so also from the big data warehouse there is a user interface here right business user business logic and there's some data analytics uh, which is also involved so let's see uh, the definition of each uh, uh, module here so the iot architecture contains the following components the things that are equipment with sensors and actuator that performs command when received from the cloud the so gateway for data filtering pre processing and moving it to the cloud because most of the processing does not happen at the sensor level because of power constraint so it is moved to the edge node you know which is the gateway and the cloud gateway which ensures the data transition between field gateways and central iot service so also you have data streaming data processors you know so which distribute the data from sensors you know let's say temperature data let's say uh, a data from Uh, high uh from different different parameters so, so different type of data needs to be streamlined you know so that those processes are basically used for that and data like i have mentioned is to store data and undefined value also right and big data warehouse for collecting valuable data control application to send uh, commands to actuators machine learning user application and data analytics for manual data processing right so this is one typical example i would want to share is uh, smart home you know so we have sensors and there are a uh, a huge amount of raw data that comes to data lake and uh, the relevant information is being extracted and uh, that information is sent to control applications which enable actuation right so this is a mobile interface that shows how 
uh, you should turn on and turn off. So this is very simple application uh, of IoT uh, that is uh, that is driven through data and sensors. So this is a typical uh, example of a health monitoring solution. And I think this would be the need for the day because of COVID, a lot of people would really need to monitor different parameters like temperature, heart rate, and uh, there are vital pressure monitoring solutions. So it becomes a very important uh, area. You know, I'm sure a lot of, lot of members should focus on developing sensors or identifying what sensors are there, connect with the, uh, your mobile phone uh, and how to power these devices and send it to a network for a medical server and monitor, you know, and here, if you see all these sensors are powered by human body. So this is some research which is actually happening, right? But in India, if you see uh, not many people do this, but they are en envisioning to do such solutions, you know, where academia will play a very big role in knowing these sensors and developing these sensors. So, right. So now we have discussed about IoT. So I will move on to the connectivity, you know. So connectivity, I'm sure we all would have learned about uh, uh, GSM in our uh, BTEC days, you know, uh, right? Bluetooth and uh, different uh, communication uh, protocols. You know? So if you see uh, for IoT deployments, uh, it's a key uh, parameter to uh, have a very good connectivity, right? So let's say for healthcare application, Bluetooth is a very sufficient one. But excuse me. But if you have uh, a Wi-Fi module, right? So it's good enough for a smart home application. But if you need for different, uh, let's say hotel, you want to monitor people and uh, check their temperature, you know, because people are moving from place to place. So such LTE sort of 4G sort of solution would be a best one. And if you need for tracking uh, a certain asset. So LoRa WLAN uh, is seen to be a best one, you know, and uh, NB narrowband IoT uh, is something uh, which is a very uh, important connectivity, which is specifically made for IoT, you know, that is a very big uh, area which uh, students or faculty needs to focus. And GSM we all know and satellite connections we know. Right, so in if you see this uh, diagram, uh, this explains the range uh, and the data rate power consumption. So depending on this, we can, uh, the end IoT uh, engineer should plan what type of connectivity one has to use, right? So if you see for a, a smart home application, I think the Wi-Fi is a very apt one or a Bluetooth is a very apt one. But if you see for, uh, uh, for a higher tracking asset, or if you want to track different traffic uh, sensor, uh, air quality monitoring, I think cellular or uh, NBIOT sort of solutions are very, uh, very relevant, right? So I will focus about LoRa, you know? So LoRa is specifically uh, in, in India, 868 uh, megahertz, they are planning to roll out uh, such LoRa networks exclusively for IoT. You know, if you see, uh, this is from one of the article I have taken. So that says how you can monitor, you have N nodes that connect with a gateway. Uh, and so there are multiple nodes. Uh, so an N node can connect to more than one or three uh, gateways. And, the, and this gateway connects to a backhaul Ethernet black backhaul and to the application server. So here these coverages are very, very high, you know. So if you see the applications are very uh, broad, like gas monitoring, vending machine, trash container, water meter, smoke, smoke alarm, and pet tracking is small, but we can ignore this, but consider uh, the other applications are of a higher scale. Right, so I'm sure we all would have studied FSK, algorithm, right, trans receiver, timestamp, SPI, right, control, packet handler. So these technologies are based on the fundamental that what all we have learned in our college days. So one should be 
well versed and in learning these concepts right so uh, the reason i have put this slide is to emphasize what actually goes into these solutions and what all things one should learn right so coming to lora so there are three different modes how it works so for battery powered sensors uh, it, it's called class a and battery powered actuator is class b and c is ma mainly powered actuators you know so depending on the battery lifetime uh, there are three different classifications how a lora network works right so in india uh, as i had mentioned uh, so the advantages of lora over cellular network is it is very effectively uh, identified for iot applications right lower number of base stations gates and gateways has to be set up and price is something very important because having a already established network for iot would be very cost effective so lora seems to be a cheaper uh, alternate and we all know that uh, 865 to 867 megahertz in india would be used for this particular uh, low power wlan uh, lora uh, applications right so this is from one of the iot policy uh, uh, sla uh, information from dst so this uh, came out in 2018 but it still stands valid even today so many factors have led to mass implementation of iot which mainly is because of low cost microprocessor sensors and networking and lot of ip addresses right uh, so you you have a lot of devices you can connect and consumers have their own interfaces like smartphones and uh, we have widespread internet access plenty of investors and government you know so this uh, is a key enabler of iot uh, and here if you see the key drivers you know in 2008 we used to call it m2m 3g uh, data collection but now in 2018 you see it is 5g you have machine learning and ai cloud blockchain and you have nd iot right so i think the key message here is the student who learns ai ml should expose or have a deep dive in learning different key drivers also like cloud and the communication side and also sensors like sensors are missing here but it's also one of the key iot drivers so this so this is this information is from the iot policy that says what all solutions are there uh, possible solutions on iot why i am showing this is not to say that this iot is already mature in the market but in india it is still happening so the key driver should be driven from academia right like if a student or a faculty have a i mean idea to use some of the sensors and derive a solution i think the key driver should come from academia and hand holding with industry to have a solution which is benefiting for the community so this tells you that okay there are some solutions which are already there so what best you can do uh, so it's kind of an eye visioner to uh, think beyond the solutions right and this is one of the infographic that says what all possible solutions are there you know like uh, air pollution fire detection structural health monitoring right and electromagnetic level so these all these applications will definitely require a sensor right so way forward with nanotechnology right i'm sure everybody is uh, following my session so we we have some couple of slides so where i'll be focusing on important points you know like nanotechnology so here we have uh, an important point saying sensors you know so this uh, sensor how importantly uh, nanotechnology plays a role uh, is something i would be explaining now so sensors are increasingly uh, appearing in smartphones right so the biggest challenge is 
how do you miniaturize these sensors? So recently I was uh, viewing a smartphone teardown. So people were using uh, micro fans, you know, to remove the excess heat from mobile phones. So I'm sure we all would have seen fans in our computers or laptops, but in phones, it is one of the interesting sighting uh, I have seen because people are moving into higher computation and higher processing, right? So when you have a lot of sensor data, temperate, uh, like the, the complexity increases, right? So nanotechnology or the research uh, which academia carries out will play a very big role in uh, uh, contributing to the industry, right? So if you see, we discussed about sensors, right? So in 80s, people used to have tube type and 90s, it's a different package. And uh, 2000 or 2020, we'll have MEMS type. You know, it's a very small chip, you know? So the size considerably reduces and the power consumption considerably reduces. So this is how, this is how people actually move, you know, from a very big, uh, uh, <clears throat> sorry, very big uh, module to a smaller module, which enables interact, uh, in, uh, integration of these components, right? So this is something which is very interesting. I'm sure students who pursue, who wish to pursue research on uh, different uh, IoT solutions should definitely see this. Right? So people actually make these flexible wrist type sensors, you know, a lot of research goes into integrating these modules. Right? It, it may sound easy, but it's a very complex one. So, but in, in PSNA, most of them focus on the data part, but I think it's the student who should explore the end-to-end -end verticality, you know, from the sensor till the end data, you know, so that I think that is a key enabler because, and, and if you want to pursue your master's or MTech or uh, a PhD in uh, Institute, you, you will be given an opportunity to work on such fields, right? So, but you should stay updated uh, on what is actually happening in the market, right? So why I'm presenting this, this is very exciting because people nowadays are very curious to know about their health parameters. And even during this COVID time, if anybody sneezes, you are really scared whether you have Corona or not. But so people should actually uh, have a mechanism to monitor these things, right? So how do you make the, how do you, how can you make uh, best use of IoT something one should learn, right? So here you see the wireless communication is Bluetooth. So Bluetooth, it, it monitors the heart parameters, if you see here and it's sent remotely to the healthcare. So this is the sensor, the gateway, and the end uh, uh, healthcare service provider, right? So this is this is from one of the uh, GATEC uh, website. You know, they have a uh, nano sensors like it. So it's, it's kind of a visual representation they have given, but what I could gauge from this architecture is that you have plenty of sensors embedded into your uh, fabric or implanted in uh, one uh, human that monitors different parameters, right? And it's, it has a nano node link, gateway and a micro interface, right? So this, is, this would be the future, like, uh, so I'm sure students should explore such topics, learn what is a nanotechnology and read a lot of articles, right? I'm sure in, in my college days, uh, I used to spend quality time uh, in library, you know, we used to access different journals, different articles, but I'm sure you have mobile phone these days, so you have everything on your palm, right? So learning is not a problem, but what you learn and how do you update yourself is very important, right? So coming to the same uh, schematic, you would have a sensor. Of course, your signal would be very low. So you need an amplifier. You need a microprocessor and A to D conversion. And through Bluetooth, you send this data to a smartphone. And from smartphone, it you have a cloud computing platform that compares, or it has a secure connection to your pa patient database. And it also has a link with your hospital, right? On a physician phone or, uh, in-house server. So this is a 
i'm sure everybody would have learned these modules so i think the next level would be like this you know nano sensors amplifiers and each topic is a deep down you know if you see nano sensors if you are interested it's a deep down if you see amplifier it's a deep down lesson right so and so let me bring a very important topic here right so which is also my interest area everybody used to see uh, technology right so i it so you will have a processor which will work but how do you make these processes right so it comes from semiconductor wafer and you have a chip here and you do a first level of packaging so in in my previous slides i had shown about uh, professor rao tumula right so i have taken these uh, this information from his books you know that deeply explains about packaging right i don't know whether any of our students have uh, learned about packaging but this is a very important field one should learn packaging technology is is going to be a very big key change key enabler in the industry semiconductor industry right so coming to the topic so you you see a chip here right so this chip you do a first level of packaging and and you integrate into this uh, motherboard sort of thing and you have a second level of packing and you have a bigger module right assume this is a computer right so motherboard or a black plane back plane so this is kind of a very interesting uh, image uh, that says how a wafer uh, comes out and you do ic design and fabrication packaging electrical design do a test reliability thermal management single packaging multi packaging so it's a it's an ocean of topics if you touch packaging right so if you do from board level you have passive devices you do auto electronics rf packaging mens packaging how do you seal and how do you do encapsulation right uh, printed wiring board board assembly packaging materials do a testing inspection and you get into final assembly you know in in psna days uh, i still remember we used to go to e department where we had uh, learned about uh, uh, pcbs you know that was that was very exciting but after so we shouldn't saturate there but we should move to the next level you know like what are the key packaging technologies are there how people are packaging or explore how your mobile is been packaged right that's a very interesting learning discussion uh, for students as well as for faculty members right so this is a very interesting multi die solution right you see people use mcm models in 1980s system and package you have an rf module you have 2.5d right you have processors and different uh, interposers and you have a 3d ic which is happening so let me give an example here so assume we we would have our own houses right earlier it used to be hut houses but later you have these uh, construction vertical constructions right like uh, skyscrapers same thing is happening in packaging you know when you even if you have a memory architecture so it it's actually multi story building and how do you access data using read line write line right so i'm sure uh, digital design we would have learned that so that that's how it actually works it it all those things come from the semiconductor uh, industry so if when you're learning about dram or memory or any module or any processor think how it came you know that learning one should one student should have right so if you see in this particular diagram i have i'm i'm showing what 3d ic which is chip on wafer right in the wafer itself they do they'll integrate all these components and they'll package it so it will be a very so how your apple phones are very thin they do have such technologies so my uh, thought process for students and for faculty is explore such areas and uh, uh, begin to uh, do research on these areas right and if you see here uh, let me zoom in a little bit right so here you see heterogeneous integration you will have different lasers different modules and here you see it is bonded with some uh, silicon wafer here right so all these sort of research happens in sense so getting into sense you should have an mtech degree and you should crack gate and get into phd right it is so heartening to say we have very few students from tamil nadu 
and i am I, i used to mention this when we interact with faculty uh, professor uh, vincent sir we should have a lot of students from our state right so how do you get into uh, this competition to stay updated and you have to learn a lot of concepts right so that's i think that's the key message i i agree to deliver here and this image right is it's a very uh, detailed picture right how uh, people actually look into 3d system on system on package it's still a research concept but if you see uh, the whole device would have sensors mems packaging it will have antenna and filters it will have a thermal sop capacitors and uh, you will have uh, photo detectors and this is basically a module right and it will have batteries and this is a silicon wafer the blue part is a silicon wafer it could be a glass or an organic core with right so a vision of this image basically is the 3d hyper integration of information biotech optotech and mems modules right so gatech uh, or georgia tech uh leads uh these research work so students should read about uh, other institutes right not only iisc but about other institutes or what research they carry out right and you guys should not only stick to it related jobs but you should also stick to uh, jobs that are uh, fetching you a high quality research right so let me so for internet of everything you need connected devices you need to collect data you need to access data you need to comp do complex analytics and you should have the unique value right so since we are all uh, it engineers right how so i have a question posed here right? so you have nano scale devices right everything is embedded and it, it's a very small uh, module so how data is processed when device go nano scale meaning everything goes nano scale right so now we are dealing with cloud ai ml i'm sure this uh, would be a very interesting area where how data is processed when devices or every module goes nano scale right that's a very interesting uh, question or thought process i want to leave to the audience and i will leave the floor to question and answers but i think we are we don't have an interactive module so i will skip this slide and i will show some keen stats and uh, i think the moderator had advised me to send uh, questions over messaging which i will answer it offline uh, but i will finish with this last slide uh, so so this information is very vital so i will zoom in a little bit so see uh, i advise i strongly advise our students faculty members to read about our uh, department not only sense but iisc why i'm telling sense is to understand what research is happening day to day right so i had been very instrumental in my uh, employment i had uh, i was the first member to make these newsletter for our department and uh, as you can see we have uh, sorry as you can see we have released a lot of newsletters and that information tells uh, what key research uh, we pursue uh, in our department right so it's a free uh, pdf version about 20 pages students faculty everybody should definitely read this and if there is a copy of this in our library it would be great right so and i'm i'm sure there there are a lot of experts in iisc right everybody asks me can you uh, do you interact with faculty who deal with the uh, high end research you know so uh, i would suggest to everyone to see about nptel so nptel is an initiative uh, by institutes in iisc to deliver these lectures in uh, on through online right so students or anybody can register here and by the way they give certificates for these courses right so faculty uh, see this faculty member is from uh, desi department so he he is a very good uh, professor who explains about iot so i urge every student to or faculty members also to see such lectures register enroll yourself in nptel and uh, uh, learn on, through online right and uh, for covid related work i am sharing you the website link uh, google about iic covid 19 there a lot of work 
which has been executed uh, in IIC uh, on ventilator program and N N95 mask and uh, they, and we have been instrumental in connecting our industry of fleet members to IIC here to sense department right so coming specifically uh, so in other informations right like there is an IOT open lab right which deals with uh, several uh, initiatives in IOT so th this website is for students as well as for uh, faculty who wants to have entrepreneur or who wants to start uh, exploring different IOT solutions and DST calls for proposals uh, faculty members who, who who wish to submit proposals, get industry projects can do here. And uh, this is Water Lab. And uh, we have uh, a CDS department, a uh, computational data science department who actually deal with uh, data science and all, right? So I think I have. So I've finished my session. I'm sure uh, uh, everybody enjoyed my session and uh, I will open the chat screen. So if I see some questions, okay. Uh, so professor, uh, kindly tell about uh, LoRa applications for agriculture sector. So by the way, I'm not professor. I I am an employee here. So uh, to tell uh, to answer your question, uh, so LoRa, so company uh, TC, you, you all know TCS, right? So they are planning to deploy LoRa networks in India, right? So in, with respect to agriculture, you need to figure out what all sensors are there for agriculture uh, sector. And uh, these uh, sensors, uh, how do you power them? And how do you connect? Uh, how do you have the end uh, uh, module to send this data to LoRa network? You should, you should learn what sub modules are required and uh, have a wireless link with a frequency that is matching with LoRa. Uh, I urge you to read about LoRa from uh, TCS website you, and they are reachable also. I tried contacting them for one of my uh, uh, personal project. So we, uh, we actually had a detailed discussion uh, and I am also, uh, I had benefited uh, by discussing with them and, and, and that day, at that phase they were mentioning, we are in the deployment phase, but now I'm pretty sure that they would have this solutions implemented. So for agriculture, uh, A, you should identify sensors, B, you should identify what submodules are needed uh, for LoRa and talk to this TC. They have a white paper published. So I urge you to see that uh, information. So if there are any more questions, you can contact me, you can email me, I prefer email. Uh, uh, so you can also check more information from our sense website and uh, so Professor Selvaraj, uh, I have finished my session. Yes, Professor. Good. Uh, thank you. Thank you for a wonderful session. Awesome, sir. I was skeptical about the timing, but I, I think I have clocked it rightly. So Vincent sir is there in the hi, session. Sir. I want to say hi to him. Vincent sir. So I should uh, thank IT because. Uh, yeah. Hello, Professor. How are you doing? <laughs> Superb, sir. Uh, I think we are blessed with the uh, IT infrastructure. Otherwise, uh, we can't work from uh, home. <laughs> the webinar very model, nice. model. Very nice, Peter. I'm in college. I think oh, we fantastic. started working. Yeah, college kids entering into the campus. Very and good. And we are taking about some funding and all. Uh, so good. I'm see, yeah, I'm listening to your entire uh, video presentation. It's a very Thank excellent. You. And Thank you used to say that every year on February, the die is open, no? Open day. Yes, yes, professor. But uh, the last two years, I, we could not able to send some students over there to visit IEC campus. That's when I was there, uh, when I was there in IEC campus, it's an amazing experience, and uh, that's uh, learning. 
uh, really it is a fantastic experience uh, seeing the sense lab and other uh, the computer science department and other the data science lab and so on uh, so what we i think we planned but last two years we are we could not able to make it out. so if we have a chance to visit all the students the top top notch student visiting mm -hmm. the ec bangalore then they can come for the writing the gate examination and other thing and they can do the phd at ec bangalore then we will be the great for our nation also that is so our fantastic, dream fantastic uh, lecture definitely yeah, sir yeah, I, I think uh, i couldn't see the students face but i i, I hope i had made justice uh, to my presentation <laughs> no we will be getting feedback naturally being a faculty member and being a iec iec faculty and yeah. i think the excellent presentation i am just yes. seeing from the beginning it's excellent presentation yes. peter manoj and i hope you. you will get all success in your future to in the industry sir. collaborator and we Definitely. are also we are working with the industry collaboration related to the iot with related to the intel we yes. hope that our faculty members will also joining this and we will do the best for our student society and as well as the our, our nation so thank you very yes, much sir. peter manoj thank you sir thank you, thank you sir uh, stay bye. safe stay healthy everybody and uh, let's keep I learning see. during this time yeah thank you professor selvaraj for uh, moderating the session and uh, i thank all the participants for your time bye